monetary system to trust people. If you came into my store and I said, this lamp that I've got is pretty good, but the lamp next door is much better, I wouldn't be in business very long. It wouldn't work. If I were ethical, it wouldn't work. So when you say industry cares for people, that's not true. They can't afford to be ethical. So your system is not designed to serve the well-being of people. If you still don't understand that, there would be no outsourcing of jobs if they cared about people. Industry does not care. They only hire people because it hasn't been automated yet. So don't talk about decency and ethics. We cannot afford it and remain in business. It is important to point out that regardless of the social system, whether fascist, socialist, capitalist, or communist, the underlying mechanism is still money, labor, and competition. Communist China is no less capitalistic than the United States. The only difference is the degree by which the state intervenes in enterprise. The reality is that monetaryism, so to speak, is the true mechanism that guides the interests of all the countries on the planet. The most aggressive and hence dominant variation of this monetarism is the free enterprise system. The fundamental perspective as put forth by early free market economists like Adam Smith is that self-interest in competition leads to social prosperity as the act of competition creates incentive which motivates people to persevere. However, what isn't talked about is how a competition-based economy invariably leads to strategic corruption, power and wealth consolidation, social stratification, technological paralysis, labor abuse, and ultimately, a covert form of government dictatorship by the rich elite. The word corruption is often defined as moral perversion. If a company dumps toxic waste into the ocean to save money, most people recognize this as corrupt behavior. On a more subtle level, when Walmart moves into a small town and forces small businesses to shut down for they are unable to compete, a gray area emerges. For what exactly is Walmart doing wrong? Why should they care about mom and pop organizations they destroy? Yet even more subtly, when a person gets fired from their job because a new machine has been created which can do the work for less money, people tend to just accept that as the way it is, not seeing the inherent corrupt inhumanity of such an action. Because the fact is, whether it is dumping toxic waste, having a monopoly enterprise, or downsizing the workforce, the motive is the same, profit. They are all different degrees of the same self-preserving mechanism which always puts the well-being of people second to monetary gain. Therefore, corruption is not some byproduct of monetarism. It is the very foundation. And while most people acknowledge this tendency on one level or another, the majority remains naive as to the broad ramifications of having such a selfish mechanism as the guiding mentality in society. The internal documents show that after this company positively, absolutely knew that they had a medication that was infected with the AIDS virus, they took the product off the market in the U.S. and then they dumped it in France, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. The U.S. government allowed it to happen. The FDA allowed this to happen. And now the government is completely looking the other way. Thousands of innocent hemophiliacs have died from the AIDS virus. This company knew absolutely that it was infected with AIDS. They dumped it because they wanted to turn this disaster into a profit. So you see, you have built-in corruption. We're all chiseling off each other, and you can't expect decency in that sort of thing. And feeling that, they don't know who to elect. They think in terms of a democracy, which is not possible in a monetary-based economy. If you have more money to advertise your position, the position you desire in government, that isn't a democracy. It serves those in positions of differential advantage. So it's always a dictatorship of the elitists, the financially wealthy.
It is an interesting observation to note how seemingly unknown personalities magically appear on the scene as presidential candidates. Then, before you know it, somehow you are left to choose from a small group of extremely wealthy people who suspiciously have the same broad social view. Obviously, it's a joke. The people placed on the ballot are done so because they have been predecided to be acceptable by the established financial powers who actually run the show. Yet, many who understand this illusion of democracy often think, if only we could just get our honest, ethical politicians in power, then we would be okay. Well, while this idea of course seems reasonable in our established, oriented world view, it is, unfortunately, another fallacy. For when it really comes down to what is actually important, the institution of politics and thus politicians themselves have absolutely no true relevance as to what makes our world and society function. It's not politicians that can solve problems. They have no technical capabilities. They don't know how to solve problems. Even if they were sincere, they don't know how to solve problems. It's the technicians that produce the desalinization plants. It's the technicians that give you electricity, that give you motor vehicles, that heat your house and cool it in the summertime. It's technology that solves problems, not politics. Politics cannot solve problems because they're not trained to do so. Very few people today stop and consider what it is that actually improves their lives. Is it money? Obviously not. One cannot eat money or stuff money into their car to get it to run. Is it politics? All politicians can do is create laws, establish budgets, and declare war. Is it religion? Of course not. Religion creates nothing except intangible emotional solace for those who require it. The true gift that we as human beings have, which has been solely responsible for everything that has improved our lives, is technology. What is technology? Technology is a pencil which allows one to solidify ideas on paper for communication. Technology is an automobile which allows one to travel faster than feet would allow. Technology is a pair of eyeglasses which enables sight for those who need it. Applied technology itself is merely an extension of human attributes which reduces human effort freeing humans from a particular chore or problem. Imagine what your life would be like today without a telephone, or an oven, or a computer, or an airplane. Everything in your home which you take for granted from a doorbell, to a table, to a dishwasher, is technology generated from the creative scientific ingenuity of human technicians. Not money, politics, or religion. These are false institutions. And writing your congressman is fantastic. They tell you to write your congressman if you want something done. The men in Washington should be at the forefront of technology, the forefront of human studies, the forefront of crime, all the factors that shape human behavior. You don't have to write your congressman. What kind of people are they that are, that are appointed to do that job? The future will have great difficulty. And the question that's raised by politicians is how much will a project cost? The question is not how much will it cost? Do we have the resources? And we have the resources today to house everyone, build hospitals all over the world, build schools all over the world, the finest equipment and labs for teaching and doing medical research. So you see, we have all that, but we're in a monetary system. And in the monetary system, there's profit. And what is the fundamental mechanism that drives the profit system besides self-interest? What is it exactly that maintains that competitive edge at its core? Is it high efficiency and sustainability? No, that isn't part of their design. Nothing produced in our profit-based society is even remotely sustainable or efficient. If it was, there wouldn't be a multi-million dollar a year service industry for automobiles. Nor would the average lifespan for most electronics be less than three months before they're obsolete. 
Is it abundance? Absolutely not. Abundance, as based on the laws of supply and demand, is actually a negative thing. If a diamond company finds ten times the usual amount of diamonds during their mining, it means the supply of diamonds has increased, which means the cost and profit per diamond drops. The fact is, efficiency, sustainability and abundance are enemies of profit. To put it into a word, it is the mechanism of scarcity that increases profits. What is scarcity? Based on keeping products valuable, slowing up production on oil raises the price. Maintaining scarcity of diamonds keeps the price high. They burn diamonds at the Kimberley diamond mines. They're made of carbon. It keeps the price up. So then, what does it mean for society when scarcity, either produced naturally or through manipulation, is a beneficial condition for industry? It means that sustainability and abundance will never ever occur in a profit system for it simply goes against the very nature of the structure. Therefore, it is impossible to have a world without war or poverty. It is impossible to continually advance technology to its most efficient and productive states. And most dramatically, it is impossible to expect human beings to behave in truly ethical or decent ways. People use the word instinct because they can't account for the behavior. They sit back and they evaluate with their lack of knowledge, you know, and they say things like, Humans are built a certain way, greed is a natural thing, as though they've worked for years on it, and it's no more natural than wearing clothing. What we want to do is to eliminate the causes of the problems, eliminate the processes that, that produce greed and bigotry and prejudice and um, people taking advantage of one another and elitism eliminating the need for prisons and welfare. We have always had these problems because we have always lived within scarcity and barter and monetary systems that produce scarcity. If you eradicate the conditions that generate what you call socially offensive behavior, it does not exist. The guy said, well, isn't that inborn? No, it's not. There is no human nature, there's human behavior, and that's always been changed throughout history. You're not born with bigotry and greed and corruption and hatred. You, you pick that up within the society. War, poverty, corruption, hunger, misery, human suffering will not change in a monetary system. That is, there'll be very little significant change. It's going to take the redesign of our culture our values, and it has to be related to the carrying capacity of the earth, not some human opinion or some politician's notions of the way the world ought to be, or some religious notions of the conduct of human affairs. And that's what the Venus Project is about. The society that we're about to talk about is a society that is free of all the old superstitions, incarceration, prisons, police, cruelty, and law. All laws will disappear, and the professions will disappear that are no longer valid, such as stockbrokers, bankers, advertising, gone forever, because it's no longer relevant. When we understand that it is technology devised by human ingenuity which frees humanity and increases our quality of life, we then realize that the most important focus we can have is on the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. For it is from these natural resources we gain the materials to continue our path of prosperity. Understanding this, we then see that money fundamentally exists as a barrier to these resources for virtually everything has a financial cost. And why do we need money to obtain these resources? Because of real or assumed scarcity 